Okay, welcome to another Orbiter 2010 video. Now, right away, you're going to be noticing that things look very different from my usual videos. And that's because I'm doing a, a live recording here to coincide with the timing of the October 7th, 2012 launch of the uh, SpaceX Falcon 9 rocket and the Dragon capsule. It's a mission to the ISS to uh, resupply and return some cargo back to Earth. I thought it would be interesting to uh, do a live recording of the events at uh, KSC as they're happening and then overlay uh, Orbiter on top of that and when the launch actually takes place I will simulate the experience to the best of my ability using Orbiter. So we're still about 20 minutes away from the launch I'm going to go ahead and pause the video and we'll pick back up when it's close to time to launch and at that time I will have the audio from the uh, launch site also running through so we'll be able to hear everything that's going on as well. So we'll see you in a minute. Helium check out is aborted nominally. T minus 30 seconds. At T minus 3 seconds the nine Merlin engines of the first stage will ignite. T minus 15. So at three seconds. 10, 9, 8, 7, seven 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. And here we go. And liftoff. Liftoff of the SpaceX Falcon 9 rocket. Launching Dragon to the International Space Station and returning cargo resupply missions to U.S. soil. This is awesome. I've never done this before. Okay, so I'm going to roll to a heads up position. Getting a lot of lag, unfortunately. Pitch over just a little bit. I want to rotate, or rather yaw, around to 137. T plus 45 seconds. One minute and 10 seconds after liftoff, the Falcon 9 will reach supersonic speed, passing through the area of maximum dynamic pressure. 10 seconds later. Still working on the yaw. stress on the rocket reaches its peak because of the rocket's velocity and the resistance created by the atmosphere of Earth. Just like on TV. <laughs> Second stage has started engine chill. Okay. Okay, we're coming up to the end of the first stage. Let's get ready for that. Everything is go. All nine Merlin engines performing normally. Flight, Dragon power 56 miles high and traveling at 10 times the speed of sound. Two of the first stage engines will shut down to reduce the rocket's acceleration, okay. followed by the remaining seven engines. I'm actually nervous. I'm shaking weird. So that's the end of the first stage. Now we'll get powering up the second stage. Okay. Full throttle on the second stage. I was a little ahead of their cutoff. Yawing back around to bring that relative inclination down more quickly. I'm watching my apoapsis, it's 245. Going for a target apoapsis of.
about 355 or thereabout. Okay, now we need to yaw. And the first stage is shut down. The first and second stages are separating. Yeah, I'm ahead of them for some reason. Okay, I need to yaw. Oh, wrong way. to begin a six minute, 14 second burn that will bring Dragon into low Earth orbit. I can jettison the uh, nose cone now. The Dragon nose cone has been jettisoned. Huh. Just as they said it. As planned, 40 seconds after second stage ignition, the Dragon's protective nose cone was jettisoned. Everything proceeding well. 150 kilometers. Velocity is 3.1 kilometers per second, and downrange distance of 350 kilometers. Second stage propelling utilization active. Half of orbital velocity reached. Okay. Four minutes, 42 seconds into flight. Everything is go. Falcon 9 and Dragon on their way to the International Space Station. Okay, everything's still looking good on my end. Apoapsis is at 265 and climbing. Time to Apoapsis is 63 seconds and going down. Relative inclination is 0 0.54. It's a bit high. But I have to make allowances for the fact that I'm trying to time this launch so precisely without having a whole ground crew to help me out. Five minutes, 16 seconds into flight, another four minutes. Okay, I think we're in good shape here. Second, downrange distance of 770 kilometers. You can see we are just be, uh, we're just ahead of, three and a half minutes of the ISS. Of left for the second stage engine. But the ISS is traveling. Off at nine minutes, 14 seconds after launch. The ISS is traveling 3,000 meters per second faster than me. Okay, my apoapsis is 272. Need that to come up a bit more. Go ahead and pitch up a little bit here. Yaw slightly. Go ahead. Yes, sir. I've uh, looked around the pad. It looks like the only place we have any, even a small fire, is on the, tea, uh, on the deck. Uh, I recommend that when our department gets there, they go go ahead and do their sweep over. Copy that. Pad secure. They can go on. The vehicle remains on a nominal trajectory. Roger, thanks. Six kilometers. Velocity is four kilometers per second. Six minutes and thirty seconds into the flight of Falcon, everything is go. He just announced that their velocity was four kilometers per second. So brief discussion about a fire at the launch pad, which is normal. Somehow I'm ahead of them. Watching my apoapsis, it's 290. It's almost 300. I'm going to go ahead and begin pitching down because that's going to start climbing rather quickly. Seven minutes, 14 seconds into flight. Everything is normal. I'm almost Projector. at orbital velocity. Pressure. Everything is fine with the Falcon and Dragon. My apoapsis is getting pretty close to what I want it to be. It's currently 315 and climbing. Nominal trajectory, altitude of 200 kilometers and velocity of 4.9 kilometers per second. LC, this is only sound. They're just about there. I recommend we go ahead and go into Amber. Over. Copy, please do. Roger. Do whatever you gotta do to okay. get in there. Pad's safe. My apoapsis is as high as I can allow it to go, 370. My PEA isn't quite up to what I wanted it to be. It's a little lower, but that's okay. So now I can switch over to orbit HUD Eight minutes into flight. and wait for NASA to catch up. 
But that's basically all I'm going to be able to do is the head -on gate. follow along with them through the uh, duration of the launch. So I'll go ahead and end the video when they catch up. Eight minutes, 27 seconds into the flight of Falcon 9 and Dragon. On the first commercial resupply services mission to the International Space Station, everything is operating normally. About 45 seconds away from second stage engine cutoff. Hmm. FTS has been saved. Vehicle is in terminal guidance mode. Avionic systems are nominal. So I'm about 600 seconds away from apoapsis. That's the point where I'll circularize my orbit. I believe you want to jettison the uh, second stage before you do that, though, and then just use the trunk to circularize. I think that's how they do it. Not entirely sure. I can also extend the solar array now, because that'll be the one of the first things they do after they get to where I'm at. That's going to be get rid of the panels. You can see those going away. And once the panels are off, then press P to extend the solar array. Falcon 9 and Dragon are in orbit. Perigee 197 kilometers, Apogee 328 kilometers. And a successful launch for Falcon 9 and Dragon as they reach orbit. Second stage engine has cut off, and Dragon about to separate from Falcon. Yeah, they do separate. Dragon deploy commanded. Dragon deploy confirmed. Okay, so I'm deploying the same time they are. And we have confirmation. Dragon has separated from Falcon 9. So there's the Dragon in the trunk and the uh, Falcon 9 Stage 2. And this part will go around and incinerate in the atmosphere. A picture perfect launch and a flawless flight of Falcon. Why, thank you, NASA. I was pretty good if I do say so myself. Ten minutes, fifty-five seconds into flight, and Dragon will deploy your solar arrays in about twenty seconds. Okay, that's interesting. So I deployed the solar arrays a little off schedule. I just didn't know. Oh well. Anyway, um, that was a lot of fun. I think. Hopefully, it was uh, interesting. But I'm going to go ahead and uh, conclude the video because it sounds like they're done with coverage of everything that they're going to be doing so uh, that's going to be it for this video if you liked it leave a comment down below and i will see you next time